Hello and welcome everyone to the Varsity Tutor Star Course Series, where it's been 65 million years since dinosaurs ruled the earth, which means one thing that I'm sure we're all thinking about, they never got to play or watch Jeopardy, which to the T-Rex is probably okay. Those short arms weren't made for pushing buzzers, so they're probably relieved they didn't get a chance to play. The good news is you have a chance to play, and today you've got an amazing chance to play because we've got Angela Reddick here from the Wyoming Dinosaur Center who's put together a game of Dinosaur Jeopardy for us to all play and see how well we know that world of dinosaurs. She's got a little bit of a head start, as you can see with the background behind her with, I think we can see three dinosaurs right there behind her, and we'll see many, many more as we explore today couple things for you. One, obviously, please keep it interactive. There's a polling station to the right of the screen. It's the second of the tabs next to chat there. Uh, we're going to have multiple choices for all these, so it's easy. You don't have to worry about spelling dinosaur names and all those kind of things. Use that polling area to participate. Keep track of your own score, and we want to see how you guys did. Also, there's a chat box there. Ask any and all questions for the first, you know, two thirds of class. Angela is going to be asking you a lot of questions to find out what you know. But in the last 10 minutes, I'm going to ask her questions to find out what a real paleontologist knows about dinosaurs. I want to use your questions. So keep your questions coming in. In the end, I'll use those to interview Angela. Last thing for you, have a camera nearby. Dinosaurs didn't get to play Jeopardy. They also didn't get to take selfies, but you do. And so in uh, about 35 minutes, we'll give you a chance to lean into the screen, take a selfie with some of the stars of the show. You can see there uh, behind Angela's shoulder there. And if you upload those to Instagram, you'll be entered to win a spot in an after school club with Varsity Tutors. We'll tell you more about that in a little bit, but it is time to play the game. So let me introduce you to your host of Jeopardy and your teacher for today with the Wyoming Dinosaur Center, Angela. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. So I'm really excited about a lot of stuff today. First off, for those of you that have been here before, welcome back. It's nice to see you again. For those of you that are new and don't know anything about me or the Dinosaur Center, my name is Angela Reddick. I'm one of the paleontologists here at the Wyoming Dinosaur Center in Thermopolis, Wyoming. I've been working here for about 10 years. Um, I've worked in all sorts of different positions, but now I'm education director and paleontologist. And one thing that you really need to know about me today is that I love Halloween. Hopefully there's a lot of you out there that also love Halloween. As you can see, I am already dressed up in my Halloween costume. I am a famous explorer, kind of, from around the world. And so that we can get good practice on how to use those polling stations. Your first question, I'm gonna ask you this question before we get into our Dinosaur Jeopardy. I'm gonna stand over here. You guys get a good look at my costume. I got my hat. I got my nice red trench coat. Feel very stylish today. My question is, who do you think I am? I grew up with this character. Some of you might've grown up with her too. Um, Others might see her more recently on the new Netflix uh, series that she's come out with, um, but I'll give you four choices. And you guys have to choose A, B, C, or D on that polling station. Um, so I'll give you your choices now. Am I Waldo from Where's Waldo? Am I Carmen Sandiego? That's your B option. Am I Nancy Drew? That's your C option. Or am I Dora the Explorer? That's your D option. So. Start putting in those polls. Am I A, Waldo, B, Carmen San Diego, C, Nancy Drew, or D, Dora the Explorer? So Y'all put those in just real quick. I want to see how many of you guys can recognize my fun Halloween character. Hopefully you'll see what y'all are dressing up as later on in the show. See some choices coming in there. Oh, that's awesome. I see we got some right answers. I'm excited. I'd love to be recognized. So revealing the correct answer. I'm Carmen San Diego from Where in the World is Carmen San Diego? She's got a new Netflix series. She's one of my favorite characters. She was always really cool. Plus, I love the hat. You can't beat a red hat and a red trench coat. This makes a statement. But now let's start to get into it. Let's actually go to the dinosaurs. I can be I can be an explorer in costume and an explorer in real life and we are going to explore some dinosaurs today. 
So as you can see on the screen, we've got these five different categories. What's my name? Wyoming fossil finds, on the job, Triassic trivia, and a mystery category that you can't see because my screen should probably be covering that up. That's gonna be a surprise. That's gonna be our last category. You're gonna have be, be surprised about it. I think you'll know as soon as we get to it what the category is, but I wanna keep it a surprise for now. So if you guys are ready, we're gonna start on our first category with our first question for 100 points. And I want you guys to make sure you keep track of these points as we're going, because I'm gonna ask at the end, see what your score is um, because Brian's taking the, the answering the questions too and we got to see if we can beat him so y'all keep an eye on that keep an eye on your points keep track of them as well so start with this first question this dinosaur lived during the late Cretaceous and went extinct about 65 million years ago it's the picture of the dinosaur right there you guys probably know what it is but we've got our four choices first one is a apatosaurus Second one is B, Triceratops. Third one is C, Tyrannosaurus rex. And our fourth one is D, Parasaurolophus. So you guys start putting in those poll answers and let's see how you do. Okay, I see, I'm seeing a lot of answers. I think, I think almost everyone recognizes this guy. So let's reveal our correct answer. It was C, Tyrannosaurus Rex. So you guys, make sure you write down, those of you that got the question correct, write down your 100 points. Let's keep track of that so that we know at the end. Now, let's go on. Let's get a little bit harder. Let's go to our second question. This one's worth 200 points. So this one, for those of you from Wyoming, might recognize it without the picture. For those of you that aren't from Wyoming, here's a picture. This is the Wyoming state dinosaur. So very distinctive. Choice A is Nydia, choice B is Triceratops, choice C is Dimetrodon, and choice Z, D is Zuniceratops. I should have made that choice Z for Zuniceratops, don't you think? Um, but y'all put in your answers. Let's see what everyone gets. I think a lot of y'all probably know this guy too. So let's go ahead and reveal our correct answer. It was B, Triceratops. So don't forget, this one's worth 200 points. This is worth more than the last one. Make sure you write down that number and add up your points as we go. So let's head back and let's see what question three is. So this one's 300 points. Now this one's throwing you off. This one's not a dinosaur. This animal was one of the first organisms with eyes and is often compared to a roly-poly or pill bug. At least to me, that's what this guy always looked like. So let's give you your four choices. Choice A is trilobite, choice B is crinoid, choice C is ammonite, and D is stromatolite. I really liked my ite terms here, so I wanted to use a bunch of them. Now y'all look at this, try and think about it. This one's getting a little bit harder. Let's see what you think. All right. I'm seeing I'm seeing some correct answers there. I think you guys are are not doing too bad at this. So our correct answer is a trilobite. Again, not a dinosaur. So throw you a little bit off with our dinosaur trivia, including not a dinosaur. But we'll go on. We'll go on to our next question. Question four for 400 points. This again. He lived in the ocean at the same time as the dinosaurs, but he's not a dinosaur. There are a lot of guys like this, but I'm looking for this picture specifically. What is this animal? So our first option is A, ichthyosaur, B, plesiosaur, C, tyrannosaur, and D, pterosaur. For those of you that know your dinosaurs and even your marine reptiles, you'll, you might be able to guess this guy pretty quickly. Um, one of them's kind of a, uh, a giveaway, so you don't have to worry about that one answer but let's see what you got. Okay, I'm seeing some right answers again. We got this time B, a plesiosaur. So long-necked and short-necked plesiosaurs, but we got a long-necked one here. Got a long-necked one in the museum too for you guys to see sometime. So we'll go on. We're gonna go on to that hardest question for our what's my name category. This one's worth big bucks, it's 500 points. This one is special, one of my favorite dinosaurs. Her name is Hesperoinothoides mesleri, also known to Lori, to those of us out here at the museum. It's a bird relative and the smallest animal of this kind 
ever found in Wyoming? I'll give you your four choices. Is it A, a bird? Is it B, a reptile? Is it C, an amphibian? Or is it D, a dinosaur? So this is the smallest animal of this type. One of our four choices here. One of them's a giveaway because it's kind of included in the question, but the others make it a little more confusing. So this is a little bit trickier. Let's reveal that correct answer. We got D, a dinosaur. Of course, at the Wyoming Dinosaur Center, we have to have on display the smallest dinosaur ever found in Wyoming. Just like the guy behind me is the biggest dinosaur ever found in Wyoming. Gotta, gotta have both of those guys in there. So we'll go on again, keep track of your points. Don't forget, you gotta, you gotta keep track of those points. We gotta see if we can beat Brian at the end of this. So going on to Wyoming fossil finds, we're going back to the easier ones. This is 100 point question. This Wyoming based museum is the only place where you can see Jimbo the Supersaurus and a real life fossil of Archaeopteryx. And as I said before, Lori, the Hesperoinithoides. So I give you a little bit of a hint. We're kind of sitting in it right now. So choice A is Wyoming Dinosaur Center. Choice B is Buffalo Bill Center of the West. C is the National Historic Trail Center. And D is the Tate Geological Museum. So uh, I, wanna, I wanted to include this one because looks a little bit familiar, that picture. And my background should look very similar. So I think most of you guys can probably figure this one out. It is, of course, A, the Wyoming Dinosaur Center. The other three options actually were options in uh, Wyoming. So uh, whenever y'all come out to visit, you'll have to visit all these museums. But we'll go on to our next question. So 200 points, Wyoming fossil finds. These Ice Age mammals used to roam all over Wyoming and a new specimen was very recently found near Cody, Wyoming, which is north of here, about an hour and a half, not too far away. Um, so it's that picture right there. Let's see if you guys can identify it. Is it A, a mammoth, B, an intelodon, C, a short-faced bear, or D, a dire wolf? I have a feeling you guys will probably get this one. I think you guys are, are pretty smart about that. I'm seeing a lot of right answers right now. So let's see. This, of course, is a, a mammoth. There were also mastodons and all these other guys wandering around at our time, but not too long ago, we did find a mammoth here, Cody, Wyoming. So let's see what else we found in Wyoming. Um, question for 300 points. Don't forget, keep track of your points as we're going. Um, this fossil from Como Bluff, Wyoming, south of here, was first identified by this name, but then was later re-identified as an apatosaurus with the wrong skull. See, even paleontologists get mixed up, and he never really lived this down. So we'll reveal our question, our possible answers is A, a Camarasaurus, B, a Diplodocus, C, a Barosaurus, or D, a brontosaurus. So I've made this one a little bit trickier. These are all members of the same dinosaur family called the sauropods, but there's one of these that has gone back and forth between is it a real dinosaur or is it not a real dinosaur? It's because of this little mix up with the skull. So this dinosaur was originally known by the name brontosaurus, and it happened to be an apatosaurus with the skull. That was wrong. They got mixed up. It happens. They fixed it now, more or less. Um, but let's see how many of y'all got that. So make sure you write your points down. So our fourth question about our Wyoming fossil finds for 400 points. This one's getting trickier. So this is an event from the late 1800s when O.C. Marsh and E.D. Cope competed. They're very aggressive about this to find the most and best fossils from across the states of Wyoming, Colorado, and Nebraska. These are the pictures of the two guys. This is a very important event in paleontology history. Was it called the Dino Battles? Was it called Cope versus Marsh? Was it called the Bone Wars? Or was it called the Dueling Dinos? So I'll give you guys this one. This one's a little bit tougher. That's why it's worth 400 points. So let's see how many of y'all can maybe get this one right. A little bit more split. Well, 
let's reveal that answer. We got the bone war. So this is a very, again, very important uh, point in paleontology history in the United States. Now, other things happening in other countries, but this is very big for the United States, really expanded our knowledge of different dinosaurs that were here um, during the Mesozoic period. So let's go ahead. Let's give you, let's see how you guys do on our hardest question, 500 points for Wyoming fossil finds. Anyone out there from Wyoming, you probably should know this. Otherwise, it might be a bit harder, but this is the Wyoming state fossil. Many of these are found, hundreds, thousands of these guys are found from dig sites around Kimmer, Wyoming, which is south of you. You can actually dig for them yourselves um, if you come out here and visit. But we have four choices for this one. Do you think it's a Nydia? Do you think it's an Orthoceras? Do you think it's a Diplomystis? Or do you think it's an Elrathia? Now, those of you that might know your fossils might recognize some of these names. This one's a hard one. I know it is, um, but I think some of you can get it. Okay, so let's reveal that answer. It is Nydia A. Those of you that got this one correct, great job, that's awesome. It took me quite a few years of living here to actually learn this guy's name, so. You're, you're not doing too bad, even if you didn't get it correct, but keep track of those points. That's a lot of points to have earned if you got this one correct. Now, one of my favorite categories, on the job. Let's go for that 100 point question. You see a lot of these in this category, you're gonna see a lot of pictures from our areas, from where we actually dig. Um, this is a title for an individual who studies dinosaurs or other fossils. If you remember my introduction, you should remember what this term is. So our answer, our possible answers are A, an archeologist, B, an astrologist, C, a physicist, or D, a paleontologist. So I'm thinking a lot of you are probably into dinosaurs. You'll probably know what the correct answer to this one is. I'll let you get your, get your answers in here. So what you got? Let's reveal that correct answer. It is a paleontologist. Even my dad for the longest time had this mixed up and thought archeologists study, study dinosaur bones, but nope, they study human remains. So it is of course a paleontologist that studies dinosaurs and other fossils. So keep that points. Let's go on. Let's see what our 200 point question is gonna be. So this is added to a bone as soon as it is found. You can actually see it on those bones there. These are some uh, tail bones from one of our dig sites that we found just a few years ago. And it's that little white section. Um, so here's our possible answers for what this is called. Is it a bone name? Is it B, a bone number? Is it C, a telephone number? Or is it D, a house name? Now, I like to think that my house name might be Gryffindor or something like that, but it might be more of a Hufflepuff, but that's just me. Um, so let's see, what do you guys think? This one's a little bit trickier, but if you look at those, those markings on the bone, I think you can figure it out. So, okay, let's, let's reveal that correct answer. It is B, a bone number. So each of our bones at our dig sites, they get the initials for the site. So in this case, for these bones, they were A-T-Y-A. -A. We're very original with our names and this site was called above there you are. So initials A-T-Y-A. -A. And then they get their number, which is how we figure out what they are and where they are and keep track of them in our system. So every bone, as soon as it's found, gets its bone number. Good job for those of you that got that correct. Let's go on, let's see question three, 300 points. This is one of my favorite pictures that we got in here. This is the name for an area of ground where bones are found and excavated before being taken to a museum for further study. Now, fun fact, this picture right here, I am in this picture. I'm the one in the bottom, course, close to the bottom left corner, the blue shirt with the brown hat, that's me right there. So. That's, that's Angela right there. Um, now, what's this area called? Is it A, a bone site? 
Is it B, a bone bed? Is it C, a dig site? Or is it D, a dino bed? So nice, nice place for the dinosaurs to go to sleep, so to speak. So you guys, I think I might have said this one earlier. I think I've said this one before. So let's see what your answers are. Okay, I see some correct answers out there. Let's reveal it. We got C, a dig site. So dig sites can be bone beds. They can be dino beds, but all of these areas where we dig for these dinosaur bones are called dig sites. There are a couple other names for it, but that's, that's what we use. Um, okay, make sure y'all count those 300 points if you got this question correct. Now, let's go on. Again, these are getting harder. Let's see who can get their 400 points for on the job. This actually is another picture in our lab right behind here. So this is an area where bones are cleaned, repaired, and made ready to go on display in a museum by trained preparators and volunteers. These are two of our volunteers we had a few years ago. As you can see, we don't really have an age limit on working in this area. So let's give you our choices, see what you think it might be. Do you think this is A, a bone lab? That makes sense, you're working on bones. Is it B? a clean lab, you are cleaning things, maybe so. Or is it C, a prep lab? Or is it D, a volunteer lab? So this one's a, a little bit trickier. Some of those could be the correct, correct terms, but there's only really one right term in here. So let's see what you guys get. Mm -hmm. A little bit more split. I will tell you guys, uh, game glitch there just for a second, no big deal. That one was actually the prep lab. So that was choice C. So any of you guys that got that one correct and put in C, make sure you write down your 400 points. No big deal. Um, we'll go on to our 500 point question. This is the hardest one. Um, this is actually a film a video of some of our interns um, doing this job, preparing this bone to go down to the museum. So when working in the field, if you've got a large bone, paleontologists, and in our case, interns, um, will do this. They'll put this around the bone. They use plaster and they use burlap and they put this around the bone before moving it back to the museum to kind of protect it. So here's our four choices. This one's a bit harder. So our four choices, is it going to be um, a, a jacket. Is it going to be B, a cast? Is it C, a mold? Or is it D, let's see if D will come up. Is it a hug? So I put, I put one that's in there. I like to hug my bones, but most people don't. So that may or may not be your correct answer. So this one's a bit tougher. Let's see how everyone does. Okay, let's reveal that correct answer. In this case, it's going to be choice A. It is a jacket. We put a jacket around stuff. Molding and casting is stuff we do later on to the bone once it's cleaned and prepared out of the prep lab. But a jacket is what it needs to come down off the hill safely. So for those of y'all that got those, that 400 and this 500 point question correct, make sure you write those down. I think a few of you did. So let's go on back to our Triassic trivia. We've got 100 points. We're going a little bit easy on you guys again. This is actually another picture from the museum uh, over that direction from me. Um, this term means terrible lizard. You can see a lot of these animals in here. Let's see what our options are. Is A, reptile, does that mean terrible lizard? Does dinosaur mean terrible lizard? Um, is your choice C, tyrannosaur? Or is it D, bird? Does bird mean terrible lizard? Some, are, some birds are pretty not nice. Swallows especially, I'm not the biggest fan of swallows. They always swoop down and try and attack me. But I think a lot of y'all can figure this one out, though there is kind of a little bit of a trick answer in there. I've gotten that mixed up a couple times. 
All right, I see some correct answers in there. Okay, our correct answer, of course, is B, dinosaur. The name dinosaur itself means terrible lizard, which is pretty mean. They really should have put a name that actually means like awesome lizard or something like that. I think that'd be much more appropriate for dinosaurs. Um, but we'll go on, keep track of your points, guys. Go on to our next question, our Triassic trivia for 200 points. Oh, we actually have skipped around, no big deal. This is actually in a diff. Oh, sorry. No, I'm reading wrong. Never mind. Let's forget I said that. So, Triassic trivia. This dinosaur themed book was insp has inspired five different movies following a dinosaur theme park. Authors Michael Crichton, some of you may know this guy, some of you may recognize the logo on the cover of the book I have right there. So, let's see if you can figure it out. Our four choices are gonna be Jurassic World. Our choice B is Dinosaur Park. Choice C is Tyrannosaur Park. And then choice D is Jurassic Park. So some of you may have seen some of these newer movies. Don't let it confuse you. This has this, got an older name than the original, than the newer movies that were coming out. Let's get those answers in. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of correct answers. Let's reveal it. And it's going to be D, Jurassic Park. So that's 200 points. 200 points out of Triassic Trivia if you got Jurassic Park correct. One of my favorite books. I actually really like that one, though The Lost World is really good too. So we'll go on to our Triassic Trivia for 300 points. This one, pretty neat. You can kind of look at the, uh, the picture there to see what answer I'm looking for. Um, these are the only remaining descendants of dinosaurs that are alive today. I've actually mentioned this a couple times in some of my other questions. So remember, try and remember that while you're going through these, these answers. Um, so are they A, alligators? Are they B, birds? Are they C, crocodiles? Or are they D, ducks? I like that when there were duck pictures in the, in the thing. So. What do you guys think the only remaining descendants of dinosaurs alive today are? I'm betting a lot of y'all probably able to get this because you guys are pretty smart. Yeah, I see a bunch of right answers. Okay, we'll reveal it now. Our correct answer is B, birds. So modern dinosaurs are those birds, those, those mean old swallows flying around, swooping down on me whenever I get too close to their nest. So. Uh, just keep that in mind. Dinosaurs aren't extinct. You can still see them out flying around today. So we'll go on. We'll check out our next question for 400 points. Getting into the harder ones again. This is typically a relatively easy one, but can be very tricky. This is any evidence of past life preserved in rock that can be studied by a paleontologist. Sometimes, though, they aren't preserved in rock. They can actually be preserved in tar, but for the sake of this, we'll talk about that. So let's get our options. Are these bones? Are they pseudo-fossils? Are they dinosaurs? Or are they de-fossils? So keep an eye on these. Some of these are a little bit trick, trick answers. So, so think about this one. I think you guys can get it if you think about it. I see in some right answers in there. So before we reveal the answer, I will mark out this one. A pseudo fossil actually means a fake fossil. So it's definitely not B. So our correct answer is actually going to be D, fossil. So not all paleontologists dig up dinosaurs. Not all paleontologists dig up bones. Some dig up plants. Some look at little microorganisms. So any fossil has evidence of past life, no matter how big or how small it is. So that's why that's the correct answer to this question. So last one in this Triassic trivia here, we're getting into the, the hardest ones, but I have actually mentioned this once before in this presentation, in this game that we're playing. So these dinosaurs pictured below have bodies characterized by really long necks typically, and tails that are among the largest dinosaurs 
ever discovered. They're in North America, South America, they're all over the place you can find these dinosaurs. We're kind of famous for them. We find a bunch of them here. I got one of the biggest right behind me. So here are your possible choices. Are they A, theropods? Are they B, sauropods? Are they C, ornithopods? Or are they D, decapods? So these guys, if you ever watched Land Before Time, these are the long necks. Remember, three horns don't play with long necks. Um, but they're very important dinosaurs to us. Um, this is actually a picture of Jimbo the Supersaurus right behind me. This was actually created um, when he went to Japan to go visit over there and kind of show off his massive bulk to the world. So I see in, I see in a bunch of, bunch of right answers in there. You guys are doing awesome at this. So let's see. It's going to be B, sauropods. That is the technical term. They don't really like it when you write in scientific papers, long neck, you have to use sauropods. So just keep that in mind for the papers that you guys are gonna write later on in the future. I know you'll be doing that. So now, y'all excited? We're getting into the mystery category. This is one of my favorite categories and most, most people I've had play this really like this category too. So we'll start with the easiest one and I think it's gonna give away what the category is. Blue from Jurassic World is a member of this dinosaur species that would have only actually been the size of a turkey when full grown. So this dinosaur gives away the whole category. Of course, this last surprise category is Jurassic World based on the most recent movies and the dinosaurs featured in those movies. So we'll give you our options, our answer options here. Do you think that she was a microraptor? Do you think she was a gigantoraptor? Do you think she was a velociraptor? Or do you think she was a Deinonychus? This one's, this one's, I think most of y'all are gonna get this one, but it can be a little tricky if you know a few more details about the movie. So, oh, yep, I think pretty much everyone got that one. It's gonna be velociraptor. Um, fun fact, the dinosaur in the movie Velociraptor is actually based on Deinonychus. That's why they're so big, but everyone liked the name Velociraptor better, so they stuck with that. So we're going to stick with movie facts, and this is a Velociraptor, so that's our correct answer. So now on to our 200-point question. We're going to get a little bit more in depth. This is from the second movie. No, sorry, that back. This is from the first movie. This dinosaur um, from Jurassic World is not actually a dinosaur, but a marine reptile, like I mentioned before, and was depicted at more than double its actual size. You can see it there eating a great white shark. Average size of a great white shark is 13 feet long, so compare that size to the size of this guy's head. They easily got him around 130 feet long. These guys didn't get that big, maxed out at about 60. So, We'll give you our options. Do you think this is A, a crocodile? Do you remember him being B, a plesiosaur? Or do you remember that from earlier? Is it C, a mosasaur? Or is it D, a megalodon? So a couple of, few of these pretty much all depicted in movies by this point. Um, but this specific guy, this specific marine reptile was just massive in this movie. Not quite accurate to what he really was. No. I think I'm seeing a lot of those right answers. You guys are doing a really good job with this. So we'll reveal our correct answer here. It is C, Mosasaur. So again, don't forget, Mosasaurs were not this big. That's very impressive for this movie, but a bit, a bit excessive um, for real life. It maxed out at around 60 foot long. I haven't found one much bigger than that. So we'll go on. We'll get to our 300 point question. You guys are doing great. We're almost done. We got just a little bit more to go. This dinosaur was shown only very briefly in the movie. It took me a long time to find a good picture of him because he was shown for such a short amount of time. But it was from the second movie, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. But the cool thing is this dinosaur, if you wanted to, you could actually come out here to the Wyoming Dinosaur Center and dig up some of his fossils. We find uh, some of these fossil teeth belonging to this guy from all of our dig sites. So 
if you ever want to dig and find some dinosaur teeth, you've got to come out here. But let's see if you can figure out what this dinosaur is. Do you think it's A, a Camarasaurus? Do you think it's B, an Apatosaurus? Do you think it is C, a Diplodocus? Or do you think it is D, an Allosaurus? So, um, fun little fact, all of my answer choices here actually are dinosaurs that you can dig for at our dig sites. Every single one of them. These are the four main dinosaurs that we find at our Morrison Formation Late Jurassic dig sites. But there's only one correct answer. Teeth everywhere. And that is Allosaurus. Kind of makes sense. He actually would lose his teeth when he's eating on these dinosaurs. He was shown running pretty fast. He's smaller than a T-Rex, but still kind of looks like him. And actually is pretty well known from those crests over his eyes. And so for those of you that got this one right, that's awesome. I hope y'all come visit us and maybe y'all can find some Allosaurus teeth at our dig site sometime too. So 400 points, two questions left. If you're missing, if you're a little bit behind on your points, here's where you can gain them. This dinosaur spent some time in the first movie fighting off the Indominus Rex. And he was able to do that, able to hold his own because of his heavily armored hide and his clubbed tail. Now I can't, I couldn't get a good picture that showed his club tail, but this guy is known for having that club tail. So let's see what our answer choices are. Do you think it is A, Ankylosaurus? Do you think it is B, Anotosaurus? Do you think it is C, Mimorapelta? Or do you think it is D, Gastonia? So this one gets a little bit more tricky if you know about these types of dinosaurs. All of these species are among the same group of animals, but there's only one of them that is known for his clubbed tail. I think a lot of y'all know it. Y'all might have actually gotten mad at me for how I pronounced his name. I grew up pronouncing it Ankylosaurus, but I know there are other ways to pronounce it. Some say Ankylosaurus. There are a few others as well, but Ankylosaurus, as long as you put A, you're good there. You've got the correct answer. So make sure you write down those 400 points. Now, last question. Big question, 500 points. Last chance to gain you some extra points. This is our Indominus Rex, first created dinosaur. And he was created as a cross between three specific dinosaurs. T-Rex is pretty well known for his size. Velociraptor was the secret one they didn't reveal till later in the movie, made it really smart. And then there's a third dinosaur that made up this guy right here. So it's a little bit tricky, but let's see if you can find it. Do you think it's an ankylosaurus? He's got those, those spikes and armor on his back. Is he from an ankylosaurus? Is it a Therizinosaurus? He's got those big claws. Could be from a Therizinosaurus. Do you think it's C, a cuttlefish? Kind of changed color like cuttlefish do. Or do you think it's D, a Gigantoraptor? He's really big. It could be a Gigantoraptor. Um, this one's tricky. I actually had to look this one up to make sure that I was remembering correctly um, because it's a bit tricky. Um, now that being said, some of y'all may remember he was crossed with a cuttlefish, but the cuttlefish isn't a dinosaur. So the correct answer here is the Therizinosaurus. He's got those big, strong arms, long claws, if you remember from the movie. So he is very vicious, very terrifying, but never want to meet this thing in the real life. Luckily, it didn't exist in the fossil record, so it's not likely to exist anytime soon. But that is the conclusion to our dinosaur jeopardy our dinosaur trivia game um, i hope you guys really like that i hope you kept track of your answers too we got it we got a seat did 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 we beat brian did we beat brian on this are we are we showing our uh, our better answers our, our better at answering dinosaur trivia than our host was or our co-host Let's see, I, I read Jurassic Park early on when it came out, right after the first movie. I, I read that. I've seen a bunch of the movies. I think I did okay. I, uh, I got 4,100. So let's uh, let's see how everybody else out there did. Um, I found it's it's hard uh, to to beat a uh, you know like a, the, a very curious seven year old at dinosaur trivia. So uh, I know Angela can do it, but yeah, four thousand one hundred. 
if so there's a couple of things coming up for everybody here one um angel has been asking you guys maybe i should say Carmen's idea has been asking you guys a ton of questions um now is your chance to ask her questions you guys have had some great ones so keep those coming two we're going to go live to a lot of the answers and photos that we saw were from the wyoming dinosaur center with some pretty amazing dinosaurs uh right behind angela there including i think uh when uh, when she steps out of the way for the picture the wyoming state dinosaur you don't have to step away right away uh, but uh, i just want to point out the wyoming state dinosaur is there so um get your cameras ready keep your questions coming if you put those um uh photos up on instagram tag wyoming dinosaur center we'll put their um exact handle up here in a second and varsity tutors you'll be enter entered to win a spot in the uh the after school club with varsity tutors but also, if you want to post your score and uh, if you beat me, definitely tell the world uh, that you beat me. And uh, I'd appreciate that. Tag, tag Varsity Tutors so everyone here knows as well. Um, multiple ways to win. But with that said, we've got a great shot of some amazing dinosaurs here for you. So it's time to get those pictures up. And we're going full screen to the Wyoming Dinosaur Center. All right, hopefully everyone got some amazing pictures. We'll make sure Angela's in some of those as well too. Um, she's gonna come back on screen here to uh, to answer your questions. And while she's doing that, we'll have her full screen when she answers. So you do get that cool background and your teacher knows for today, Angela up there. Um, so if you guys want more pictures, um, keep those cameras out because we'll make sure you guys get opportunities to get the best one. But um, a lot of amazing questions coming in. One came up pretty early from a lot of people, Angela, was you mentioned that the, the Brontosaurus was kind of wrongly classified as a Brontosaurus. I think there's been some debate over that. Can you tell us, was the Brontosaurus ever a real dinosaur or was it just always a misclassification? So it's a little bit dependent on who you ask. Originally, the uh, uh, Brontosaurus was an Apatosaurus's body with a Camarasaurus's skull. They got a little bit mixed up, didn't find the original Apatosaurus skull. They found a Camarasaurus skull nearby, put the two together, thought it was a brand new species because of that. They hadn't seen that combination anywhere before. So it, when they realized that, when they realized, oh, this is actually two different dinosaurs, this is an apatosaurus. That's when it kind of went away. That's when brontosaurus wasn't valid anymore. However, more recently, uh, scientists have looked into examining the big sauropods like that. They looked at the original apatosaurus skeleton that was named brontosaurus. And when they looked at this, they're like, hmm, actually based on our measurements, our examination and our data, this is different enough. It looks like it should be its own valid genus. Thus, the name Brontosaurus very recently within, I think, the last five years or so has come back into circulation. And that Apatosaurus skeleton that was Brontosaurus originally, then became Apatosaurus, is now Apatosaurus again. Definitely depends on who you ask and which scientist you're talking to. But uh, yeah, it's, it's Brontosaurus again, just to get, make it even more confusing. That's fascinating. And I think that kind of gets to the point that, you know, we dinosaurs have been gone for 65 million years, but we've only known about them for a little over 100, right? Maybe one or 200, but really been studying them relatively recently since you mentioned the bone wars were pretty big in, in kind of getting everyone thinking about dinosaurs and getting all that information out there. So for anyone out there thinking, um, you know, hey, it, it's been so long, I'm sure they've discovered everything yet. I'm sure everything is known yet. Uh, I'll, I'll ask that to you, Andrew. That's not true, right? There's still a lot to be discovered and we need new paleontologists to help us do that right oh yeah absolutely we i talked about hesperon authorities Lori was only named two years ago she was named in 2019 there are new dinosaurs i'd say easily dozens of new dinosaurs being found and named every single year so you gotta come out here we gotta get new people new eyes looking out here to look for these new dinosaurs because y'all might see something different that maybe we don't so we gotta get we gotta get new blood out here 
Excellent. Well, there's multiple ways to do that. I've got a couple of follow-up questions on that that kind of came from the crowd. You guys have been asking amazing questions, and Angela, you're great at uh, giving us segues right into them. You mentioned that Lori was only named uh, two years ago. Uh, we had a lot of questions around kind of two things. One was, as answer choices were coming in, people were saying, hey, is that one even a real thing? Um, and, and then another thought is, you know, who gets to name all these dinosaurs? So we had two tracks. One was, are those not all real names in the answer choices? Then two was, was they all sound kind of cool. Who gets to come up with these names? Um, so kind of a two-part question for you. I know things like, uh, you know, Indominus, is, it was definitely made up. There are a couple of the Jurassic World ones that were made up for the movies, but were all those real dinosaurs? And if so, or even if not, who gets to come up with all those names? Yep, pretty much. From what I remember, every every name I used, every species or, or genus name that I used during this game um, is an actual either dinosaur or other fossil. So some of them might be like in the trilobites one. I talked about an ammonite. There are ammonites, that kind of stuff. All these are real organisms um, that you can Google search and, and find out more information about. Um, as to who names them, it depends honestly on who writes the paper, who uh, describes the specimen, who says the T-Rex was exactly this tall and had a head this big and his teeth were this size and this shape and all this kind of stuff. Who goes through the details of laying out each individual thing for the very first specimen of that genus or species that's ever found? Um, Lori, while I say she was named two years ago, was actually found 12 years ago, but you didn't have someone interested in naming her at the time. The person who found her much preferred dealing with marine reptiles. So he didn't really care about it. He didn't really want to describe this dinosaur, but he did do a lot of work for it. So a few years ago, when a new scientist came in and says, hey, I'd like to describe this. this I think he is a new species, um, new genus and new species. They took the original information from the scientist who worked on it, go into more detail, write it all up, get it peer reviewed, send it into a publication, get someone, get other people to look at it and say, okay, this makes sense. We're going to take you for your word. You get to name it. Um, you get to pick what you want. And Hesperonithoides actually means, and most dinosaur names tend to try and mean something. Um, this one means, I think, bird relative of the West. So we're in the Western United States. She's a bird relative. So that's where you get Hesperornithoides. Um, it breaks down pretty much to bird relatives. So we always try to get them to mean something. Well, typically, some people don't, but uh, oftentimes they're named after people. The thing is, I will say this, it's a little bit of a no-no. You don't name something after yourself. Now I was talking about the bone wars with Cope and Marsh. There are, there's a, there's a, a, a Thnelia Rex. So Marsh's first name was Othniel Charles Marsh. So he named something after himself. You're not supposed to do that. You kind of frowned upon, but some people still do it. So sometimes the names just come from places. Sometimes they come from people. Sometimes they come from what they're related to. So um, a lot goes into choosing the right name for your dinosaurs and other fossils. That's fast. So basically you're saying that some of the, the kids watching out there today will have a chance to name dinosaurs. Um, you know, if they, if they put in the work, they discover them, they do the research to learn a little mm -hmm. bit more about them. Um, that's a really amazing uh, honor of it, of it. Some of you will have the opportunity to have, um, which leads me to my next question. You, know, you mentioned we need new blood in, in paleontology, young people getting into it. And it sounds like for those who came to the last class uh, with Angela Wyoming Dinosaur Center, this is a little bit of review, but you guys offer opportunities for people to come and try out paleontology to see if they like it. Kids can even come out with their families and have discovered, you know, new bones and new dinosaurs, right? Tell me a little more about that. Oh, yeah. So at our dig sites, I told you before, we find four different kinds of dinosaurs. So there's nothing saying we won't find not only a new dinosaur, but a new species or something like that. With our programs, we have full day digs called dig for a days. We have half day digs um, called uh, shovel readies. Um, we have prep lab programs where you can actually go in and clean bones that have already been found. Um, we have high school programs that you can come out and actually look for uh, fossils um, for a week and work with people there. Um, or you can actually just come out with your family. There's no age limit on these kids programs. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> my fellow paleontologist likes to like we like to have fun here it gets a little boring in this in the winter but in the summer all these kids come out here all their families come out here we have um, age ranging from 18 months to 90 plus years old um, all these people that come out and they can dig for dinosaurs they can find something new they get their name marked in the book if they find something and it's all recorded and um, I'd say based on the numbers of people we tend to have come out they have a lot of fun doing it That's such a cool opportunity. If anyone's out in the Wyoming area or wants to plan a trip out there, um, definitely check out what Wyoming Dinosaur Center has to offer. I, I definitely it sounds just like such an amazing experience that I wish I would have known about when I was a kid, but um, definitely my kids will have opportunities to do that. So we'll be out there. Um, also should mention again, if you get those Instagram photos up, we'll do one more question and then uh, put up those Instagram handles. You'll have an opportunity to, to win a spot in or just enroll in on your own uh, a spot in uh, one of the varsity tutors after school clubs. There's all kinds of cool ways to learn more about the things you're passionate in. And we actually had another star course host uh, earlier um, who was a paleontologist um, earlier in the summer, I should mention not earlier, like today, um, who had named dinosaurs before and did some content for us um, for uh, for some of those clubs or even talks about the process of how he came up with names for uh, for the dinosaurs he got to name. So all kinds of cool ways to explore with varsity tutors and with uh, the Wyoming Dinosaur Center. Um, last question for you here because I know it's a school night. It's the last school night before Halloween itself. And so some people are coming up with kind of their last minute costume ideas. So kind of a two-part question. For those of you, a lot of people were saying what their Halloween costumes would be. Uh, we definitely add uh, some blue from Jurassic World, some other Jurassic World characters. Um, two-part question. One, some people wanted to know if I want to go as a paleontologist, what, uh, what should I make sure I include as part of my costume? And then the other one for you is if you could go as any dinosaur for Halloween this year, which dinosaur would you pick? You know, we'll assume that you can get all the supplies you need to make the perfect costume. So what goes into a perfect paleontologist costume and what dinosaur would you go as if you add all the supplies to make it happen? Okay. I would say... It isn't too inaccurate to actually dress as one of the paleontologists from the first Jurassic Park as uh, Ellie Sadler, or the, the girls, or um, uh, the doctor from those. Typically, it's a button-down shirt. You want something that, that covers most of the skin so you don't get sunburned but still breathes because you get kind of hot out in the summer like that. Um, work pants khakis, shorts, something like that. I would definitely recommend some kind of hiking boots because you want those boots. Um, if you can, hammer's not a bad thing to have. They do make special rock hammers. I always carry mine in the field. Um, maybe a backpack that's got some supplies in it. A compass is always a good thing. Um, and then maybe some digging tools. Um, we don't use trowels too often, but you can always find like trowels and stuff maybe in your in your parents' gardening kit or something like that. Um, we actually use something like pocket knives. We use oyster knives more often than not. So those of y'all on the East Coast, maybe some of y'all have oyster knives available. You can carry those around. Um, but that compass, that hammer, the hiking boots especially, um, and then my nice, a decent breathable button-down shirt, maybe a nice big hat. The, the red fedora is not the best for working in the field. You want something with a little bit wider brim than that. Um, now, as for what dinosaur I'd go as, if I could, if I had all the supplies I would need, I would definitely go for something that would make an impact. That would just be very noticeable. I'd probably go as a sauropod. I'd probably try to go as something like Jimbo. I'd want to be really big, um, something that, that makes everyone take notice. Um, now, how in the world I'm going to get like my arms out to collect the candy when my neck's a lot longer than my arms are? That I haven't figured out yet, but that would probably be my choice. I'd want to probably go as the Jimbo or something. Great answers all around. Yeah, we'll have to think about how we get that candy. Maybe with that long of a neck, you can just hang a whole bunch of candy bags there and then, you know, they'll just keep dropping them in. So uh, an invitation to uh, to get all the more candy. So, uh, hey, huge thanks, Angela, to you, to everyone at Wyoming Dinosaur Center for, uh, for putting this on for us, for putting together such a fun game. Um, again, everyone out there, thank you so much for your participation. Uh, if you beat 4,100, 4, go out and uh, tell the world that you beat me. I, I don't mind at all. 
well. Hopefully a lot of you guys did. Um, on the way out, we're going to get up the official handles here. So you know who to tag in those Instagram photos or those, uh, you know, th those announcements of how well you did in Dinosaur Jeopardy. Have a great Halloween, everyone. Uh, Angela and everyone at the Wyoming Dinosaur Center and everyone out there um, as well. We hope to see everybody back here soon. Stay safe and healthy on Halloween. And uh, it's been a, a huge, whole lot of fun with everybody. So we'll see you back here soon.